All right, move this stuff away a little bit. So when I'm looking at, when I'm looking at my photo, a couple of kind of basic proportion things I want to be thinking about is the fact that when I'm looking at the face, I'm looking basically at an upside down egg, right? We all have a greater kind of mass at the top of our head, right? So we've got to have space in there to hold our giant, giant brains. And then it typically narrows toward the bottom of the face, right? And so if I think about it as an upside down egg, that's kind of the basic shape that I want to start with. I don't want to get details of things like the contour of the hair and the, you know, the ears and things like that. I want to kind of just put those basic proportions in. If I look at this one, for example, most of the mass of the head is up here, right? Part of that obviously has to do with his thick hair, but you know, the, the, the actual line of the scalp might be somewhere about like right there, right? So pretty close to the top of the head. So if I think about that upside down egg shape and then the narrow part of the egg down here at the bottom, okay? So if I'm drawing, let's, start with that kind of basic idea, that upside down egg. A couple of questions that this egg shape is going to answer is one, how big is that face going to be in the space of my painting? And where is it going to be? Right? If I start drawing that upside down egg shape and I discover, whoops, I'm too close to the top or I'm making it too big because I can't include any of her neck or whatever, then I can resize it, okay? So anything that's super, super light, is you're not committing to anything yet, you are simply drawing kind of a really light upside down ache. Then, what I want to do next is to think about, okay, I've got my upside down egg. I know that if the person is looking straight at me, we are going to have a, you know, a couple of basic rules of proportions that we can use. One of them is that if we take the top of the, top of the head and the bottom of the chin. Hey, we, professor. Uh, yeah. The audio keeps cutting in and out and you keep getting frozen. Bummer. So you can hear me sometimes, just not all the time. Yeah, you were. We were hearing you really good at first, and then uh, once you were talking about after the egg head, like it, you started cutting out. Okay. Yeah, you were. Okay. I'm not really sure what I can do to, to help that. That's kind of the bad part, I guess. So, can you hear me now okay? Yeah, yeah, right now you're perfect. Okay, so maybe stop, stop me again if, if that happens, okay? okay? So, I don't mind the interruptions. This, we'll just kind of make do. So if I've got the top of the top of the head and the bottom of the chin, what I'm going to do is to say, okay, that's actually seven and a half inches. What I want to have happen is a little bit of a mark that divides the egg in half. Okay, so half of seven and a half is what? I'm not a math person. Three and three fourths. So if I put a little mark halfway down, right? and I really super lightly draw that halfway mark there, what I know that's gonna go there is what? Does anyone know these proportion rules? Is that the eyes. brow line that you're doing? It's actually the eyes. And what I'm gonna do for this, for this beginning sketch is just along those lines, right? The line that I drew for the middle is I'm just going to really lightly put in the position of the eyes. Right? I'm not going to worry about details, but all this is going to do for me right now is just to indicate where those eyes are going to be. Right? So I've got my eyes established. 
I know the eyebrows are going to be somewhat above that, and one general rule is that I can always fit another eye above the eyebrow, between the brow and the eye. So I'm going to leave that amount of space there. And I also can fit another eye between the two eyes, right? So if my eyes are about this wide, I know I'm going to be able to fit an eye here as well, right, between them. So my position of the eyes are established right smack dab through the middle of this egg dimension, okay? The next thing I'm going to do is to take that middle mark, right, where my eyes are, and the bottom here. I'm going to divide that in half again. Right, so that division should be around three and three fourths. So that division is going to be about here. And so what is going to be here, halfway between my eyes and my chin? It's going to be is that the tip of the nose? Yeah, it's going to be the bottom of the nose. Right, so. Again, I'm not going to worry about the likeness of the nose, or the details of the nose, but I know I'm going to want to have the, the bottom of the nose end there, okay? I'm going to do that same thing. I'm going to keep dividing, right? So the bottom of the nose is here, the bottom of the chin is there, dividing that in half again. So if I do that measurement, I won't take the time to use my ruler, but that position is going to be what? Yeah, it's going to be the opening of the mouth. So if I have the opening of the mouth there, the upper lip here, the bottom lip here. And I know maybe my lighting is a little bit, a little bit dark, but maybe you can see those divisions okay. A couple more things that I can add before I start to be more specific is the position of the ears will fit between the eye and the bottom of the nose, right? So if I, if I draw my ear to fit between this point and this point, right, that's going to be the length of my ear, the position there. So if I carry that line across, I carry this line across, I'm going to have my the width of my ear place, okay? So I would do that same thing, obviously, for the ear over here on the left. But as I continue drawing, what I'm going to do with this kind of basic formula is to make alterations to it to make it look more like this specific person, right? So obviously, we all have different features and we all have different proportions on our face. That's what makes us look like ourselves. So while this is helpful to begin with, now is when we want to start to be more specific. And what I'm going to notice is that, for example, the side of her head, the placement of the hair kind of cuts in on this dimension a little bit, right? So the hairline kind of fits between, obviously, the the ear and the eyes. And the width of the hair and the placement of that is going to come down on the proportion of the forehead. All right? So instead of adding the hair right here at the top, let's see, maybe. The, instead of adding the proportion here at the top, I already have that drawn in there, so I'm going to be kind of pulling that hairline down here towards towards the the eyebrows a little bit and shortening that dimension, right? So this would be kind of the shape of the hair over here on the right side of the face, and I can start to be more specific about the hairline over here on the left. And obviously, the details of the eyes are something that I could start to divide up a little bit. In terms of the proportions of the eyes, one thing I notice about her eyes, we have these very deep kind of brown, round shapes. And she has very lively eyes. But we have a little bit of that crease there, just like I, as an older person, have that as well. And then the eyelid is another line above the shape of the eye that I just drew.
And so it's not very often that when you're drawing a portrait that you would see the whole eye ball. Oftentimes, if you draw the whole ball of the eye, that person looks way too surprised. <laughs> so you always want to have a little bit of the lid overlapping the shape of the, the ball of the eye. Same thing happens here. His eyes are very much in shadow, right? But he has really big eyelids, right? So the opening of the eye is going to be much more narrow if I were to draw his, right? And so differences that, that happen with the shapes of the eyes. And one thing about the nose is that I've got the tip of the nose drawn there, but now I can connect the tip of the nose with the nostrils. And oftentimes, we, when we're drawing faces, we don't necessarily have to draw hard edges around the shapes of noses. So, for example, oftentimes we want to draw a hard line around the nostril there. I don't necessarily see that in the photograph, right? What I see is a difference of value. What I have is a light area, and then I have a slightly darker value that's next to it but I don't really see a line. The only kind of line that, you know, is detectable is maybe this one that defines the cheek a little bit, okay? So I will put that in, but again, I wanna keep these lines fairly light so that when I'm painting, I can rely on the changes of value as opposed to kind of hard pencil lines, right? So maybe that helps me put that in there, but I don't want to go any darker than that. And that's something else I want to do is to look at, because she's smiling, the edge of the cheek comes out just a little bit here, but then moves on the inside of her head a little bit to kind of define the cheekbones just a little bit up in this section, right? So I'm narrowing it up here but then moving it out just a little bit down in this part. And then there's a little bit of a line that happens there with the chin that defines her cheek and her smile as well. Now, when I come back down to the mouth, I think one thing I noticed about her characteristic is that she has fairly full lips and I'm gonna move up the edge of the lips just a little bit and kind of emphasize, you know, when I'm painting, obviously I can emphasize the redness of those lips, but I also want to remember that lips are made of skin. And even if someone has really red lips or even has lipstick on, you want to always include a little bit of those kind of neutral tones that you're using in the rest of the face. So it doesn't look too painted on. You will be painting it. <laughs> you don't want it to look painted. And her mouth has a little tiny bit of an opening. One thing about the opening of the mouth is that it's always good to kind of have a light touch when it comes to teeth. You don't want to make it look like there's a little kind of jailhouse inside someone's mouth. <laughs> so what I usually do when I'm painting teeth is to look at the fact that, you know, for example, the white of her teeth is not really white. Right? If I look at the brightest value of this photograph, it's probably a couple of places in her white, you know, dress. This is very light in terms of the highlights, but I don't want to paint super, super bright teeth and then have like black lines between them. What I want to think about is, in general, there's lots of kind of skin tone and reds and burnt siennas and all of those kind of warm earth tones here and then we're not really seeing much of those teeth at all, okay? So the value of that tooth is really close to the value of this skin just above it, okay? So I don't wanna paint like really super high contrasted teeth down there. So another thing as you're drawing is that as I would continue, it could be helpful for me, it could be helpful for some of you to indicate a little bit of where the brightest of those highlights are gonna be. And so, for example, along the length of the nose, maybe in a couple places along the cheek and maybe up here in the forehead, 
I might draw a very faint line kind of around those highlights to help me know either where I might want to put a little bit of masking fluid or where I'm going to be painting around the highlights to keep those light. Okay, so even my first mix of color, I might not want to fill those in because maybe those are actually the white of the paper in some places. Okay, so it might help, help me to draw those out a little bit. You want to keep, again, keep those light so that you don't have lots of like hard pencil lines everywhere. So keep those nice and light, but you can certainly kind of include things like that if it helps you. Um, another detail that I may add is the position of the eyebrows. So if I've got the line of the, the upper lid of the eye, the way that the brow kind of comes down almost against the eyelid, and then the brow itself is maybe about that wide. But once again, I don't want to draw a hard shape necessarily around the whole eyebrow because the eyebrow is not something that is pasted onto her, right? Our eyebrows have made, are made of individual hairs. And the only thing that makes them look like distinct shapes is just because of the, you know, the, the clustering of that, the, the, the dark of the hair. So I'm going to want to do that mostly with paint, but I can kind of show where, you know, where that value starts to change in the drawing. And, you know, something else that I notice about the side of the head is that I've got a little bit of an indication of where the hairline kind of continues upward. But if someone has kind of thicker hair, or even if they've got kind of hair pulled back, there may be a little bit more kind of mass of the hair and maybe even a few kind of extra strands that are going to be beyond the divisions of the, the egg that you have, that you've drawn out. Um, as I continue down here towards the bottom, a couple of good pointers is that when I notice the width of the neck, and where that relates to the width of what she's wearing, I don't want it to look like her neck is only this wide, right? Because it isn't, it's actually more like this wide, but then the thickness of the cloth is this wide. So I wanna look at where the dress intersects with the face. What I notice is that if I come straight out this way, the edge of the mouth is kind of where the intersection of her blanket or her dress is is kind of meeting that. So if I come straight out from the mouth, this is about where the edge of that neck is going to be. And then the, her neck itself, in terms of where we see her skin show up, is just below, right, the corner of her mouth this way, right? So if I come straight down, this is where the neck kind of intersects that way. So if I come straight down from here, this is where we start seeing the skin color. And I'll kind of make those reference points over here, over here on the left as, as well to help me draw that. A lot of this stuff is in shadow, but can really be fleshed out much more as you start to kind of examine your photo and kind of notice what's happening there. And the position of the ears obviously should be about the same place on the other side of the head. And everything else that I add in there is going to maybe help me establish some further proportions that will, again, make it look even more like this person. But the, you know, those beginning rules of proportion, those little divisions that I put in there, should obviously be erased right before you start painting. I don't want to have lines through the middle of my face. I'm going to take those out. Take out those little notches. And I don't think I have any more to erase. But as I continue drawing, you know, I'm going to add some more to the left side, but there might be some more things that I would want you to, to put in there for the, the bottom of the composition. 
But one thing you want to make sure that as you continue drawing is that you don't get too heavy with that pencil line. And that as you're first establishing where the position of the egg is going to be on your paper, that it's not too high up, that you're cropping, you know, half of the head at the top, or vice versa, that it's too low, right? So if you're using a, a picture that's about the size of your painting, that kind of helps a little bit with the translation of the size, right? The, the painting is actually going to be a little bit bigger than the photograph because my, my watercolor paper is a little bit bigger. So I haven't like, you know, done a one-to-one -one scale, but having a bigger picture can sometimes make this process of drawing just a little bit, a little bit easier. This is the kind of first kind of basic step of the drawing process to start with those kind of general proportion ideas to divide up your, the space of your, of your head a little bit and to put those markers in where the eyes go, where the nose go, where the mouth goes and then to start to really look at the photograph and, and make those features look much more like what the person looks like, right? Some of us have really long noses. And some of us have, you know, really big ears or whatever it is. So definitely put those changes in. And that's really what's going to make those, make your paintings, you know, look like the person, right? Wherever it deviates from this kind of formula that we started with, is what's gonna make that painting look like that person, okay? So this is the, you know, the beginning kind of drawing step. And then when you guys start to work on painting, you know, if this is a, a partial demo that I started with using this as a reference. And I started with just the really super light values and painted that first, right? So this was the first color I mixed. Everything that you see here that is in white is just the white of the paper that's unpainted, okay? So everything that's super, super light in terms of the highlights that you see in the photograph are just places that I worked around, right, with this kind of first light wash. This was a mix of yellow ochre and burnt sienna and I just simply lay that in everywhere where it wasn't super, super light in the, in the photo. Then my next step was to use a little more paint in the mix. And then I put in this next layer, right? So everything that is a little bit deeper than that was the second step. And let that dry. The third step is where I started to get these much kind of darker sections. And a lot of these that I put in here haven't been blended in the way that you would probably want to blend them. I would soften that normally, right, if I weren't kind of quickly painting a demo. But the, you know, these super, super dark places in the eyes, for example, these almost kind of black sections that are in the eyes, those would be painted like the very last part of the painting, right? Places of the, the hair, are going to be next to, you know, a very, very super dark black, right? So those, those can come last if you wanted to, uh, to leave those toward the last. But what I will do for you guys, let me go ahead and switch my camera back. Uh, 